drag racing fan, Monday morning racer here in the strutmasters.com showroom in Roxboro, North Carolina. Look, we've caught up with Terry Totten of Totten Motorsports, and he's got a pretty big announcement to make with strutmasters.com and the upcoming indie races with the NHRA. Terry, look, take it away. Tell us what is going on. Well, the races are coming back, and the NHRA is, uh, since we're only going to be doing one qualifying day and going straight into races has to get this going has kind of trimmed off some of the money and uh, i spoke with chip and he said no nope, you need to get out there you need to put strut masters on your car and you and you need to go racing so he uh he's kind of going to help even things out for us so that we can uh, get the ball rolling and see if we can't get this thing uh moving down the road awesome terry you know chip is always looking for who else can he support who else can he help out there in the drag racing ranks, also elsewhere in motorsports. And I'm glad that strutmasters.com is going to be associate, associated with Totten Motorsports. Look, tell me, who else is going to be supporting you? Or how else can someone come on board with these indie races coming up? Oh, we're, we look for anything. I mean, we don't even have to have big money sponsors. I mean, anything that can help us along. We have Redline that gives us discounts. Uh, you know, we have uh, a couple guys out there that sell us parts that, that make good deals on their good used parts. That's that's huge. You know, if we had to buy the stuff new, we'd need a lot more money. But, you know, if they're not worn out yet, you know, we're going to do our best to wear them out. Um, so we got Redline and now we got uh, Strutmasters and, and, and Chip on there. And we've got some guys that are helping us out with some fuel. Um, but anything from just being able to uh, uh, help out with travel expenses or uh, hotel rooms or anything like that will help us get to the next race. We run on a, on a pretty low budget. I mean, we like to step it up, but we live within our means so that we can keep going. You know, we could, uh, we could stumble and fall at any point and not be able to pick our stuff back up. But, you know, knock on wood for the last six, seven years, we've been able to keep going. So. Also been able, to keep, been able to keep going. Strut Masters on board. Now look folks, if Chip sees a great opportunity and sees it worth investing in Terry, you need to hop on board as well. Help Terry out, hot in motorsports, get on down the drag strip. Uh, Terry, look, tell folks where you are zooming in from. Where's home? And look, how did you get into drag racing? Um, I am in Omaha. Well, Gretna, Nebraska is just outside of Omaha. Um, Omaha. <laughs> Go Huskers. Uh, we've been, uh, I've lived here all my life since I was little. I mean, I was born in Omaha, but we moved out here when I was about 18 months old out to, to this place out in Gretna. Um, I started, uh, racing, um, was going to start running alcohol and, uh, I went and bought my first car from a guy by the name, uh, Don Sasenka and he goes by Mr. Magoo. Um, he told me to come on down to Dallas and, uh, look at one of his cars and I was going to make an alcohol car out of it. And I went out there and that was the first national event nitro race and i bought the car uh it, it went ahead and put it on alcohol and uh, did that for about a year and i'm like man that's nothing like going nitro racing so i talked to don and i started hanging out with him at the track and going and helping him and then he said you know i converted the car back from an alcohol car to a nitro car and uh sold it before i even got to run it because i had an offer better than i could re you know refuse and then i uh, I went top fuel and that's that I mean it just happened about that fast I had no real prior racing experience whatsoever I never came up through junior dragsters I ever got in was an alcohol funny car and uh, I made about 10 hits in that and then went straight to top fuel it was my wow. dream <laughs> wow man in an alcohol funny car and it's like ah that's not enough let's do some more that's that's pretty cool that uh, no real prior experience and then stepping into Nitro. Your story kind of reminds me of Paul Richards uh, racing with Dave Richards. He's a pool man, and, like, one of his first hits ever was in a Nitro funny car. You know, it's pretty wild that you've got guys like him and yourself that the first time they really encounter getting into drag racing is these high-powered machines that are doing – you know, phenomenal feats within motorsports. So, uh, look, you, you mentioned uh, your man there, Mr. Magoo, 
Uh, who else in drag racing have you looked up to, or, or even right now, when you go to the track, who's someone that you're communicating with? Who's someone that's like a mentor out there to you? Uh, you know, we, we, we hang out and, and watch Scott Palmer pretty close. You know, he's, he's a good guy. He's always there. Um, he's always willing to lend a hand. Uh, it's, he's, he's, he loves racing, you know, and, and he considers everybody out there as family. So we're, we're close to him. Um, you know, and, and really you can get tight with people that just park next to you. You know, I mean, we're not in midway row, so we, they keep us off just a little bit to the side. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, Terry Haddock, uh, strut masters is help is helping him out. And he's been a, a big help, uh, taking me to a, a new level. Um, you know, we were out running and struggling and uh, I was struggling to get my license because it was hard to find somebody outside of the car when I was inside of the car, when I was used to being outside of the car, you know, making sure everything is right. And, you know, we got a, a couple people that have grown with me through this and, and uh, Terry Haddock helped me with my last uh, couple passes in my license. And then he continued to help uh, with information, you know, a lot of these guys got the secret sauce recipe hidden away. They don't want to share it with anybody. They got what works for them. And some of the best advice that I got was, you know, you know, the computers are great and all that's great, but don't let it override what your mind and your eyes are telling you the car wants. The car tells you what it wants. Look at it, look at the parts, adjust it. And that's what we've been doing. And we've been making these little steps, little steps. I mean, we started in the 420, 410, 415s. Now we're down to running more, consi uh, more consistent three, uh, 395s and up, you know, and, and we, we can duplicate it now. We've, we've got, you know, we can make a run and then we can look at stuff and we can adjust. We, we're seeing what we need to see. It's hard to see, you know, it's right there in front of you, but you, you got to read it and it's, it, it's getting harder or it's getting easier, but I, it's a learning process you know, and I've been doing it a long time. Um, and I, you know, I started out helping with Mr. McGoo who never ran a computer on his car from day one, never once didn't, you know, he, he would drive the car and he would tell me which side holes went out. And I'm like, how do you know that? You know? Um, and then we would adjust from there and then all the high, you know, then he, then the whole way he ran his car, all the mechanics of his car, the, the clutch system, all of it all changed. They went to electro motion came in and they went to electric timers. They went to electric solenoids. They went to these, uh, the, and then uh, Don Jackson's all valve. And that kind of surpassed what he was used to doing. So together we had to relearn and it's become easier because he can tell me what the car's doing. He can tell me what it needs. And now I've got the, the newer equipment that I can adjust and I know what it's going to do, uh, which is just, huge now we you know we want more fuel we get more fuel we want less timing we get less timing you know we want to be able to control wheel speed you know we know what to do so it's it's getting better to the point where if we had more money we could run harder but we're at a point now it's it's i don't want to say it's a breaking point because that's a horrible word when it comes to drag racing but it, we're at a plateau that we know if we go harder we're going to replace more parts we're going to have to or we're going to end up having something catastrophic happen. We have to check all those little things that we never used to check when you're running a 440 or 450. You can run that thing all day long. Start running 395. Well, now you got a whole new playbook that you got to go through of maintenance. And that's that's kind of where we're at. We're trying to stay underneath of it, but we haven't hit the wall yet. We don't know exactly where that number is. I I feel it's in the 390s. I don't I think you start running 392s things like that, 395s, even, even 4.0s consistently, your crankshafts, your rods, all that stuff's going to have to be looked at closer. And that's where the money comes in, you know, and help. You know, we, we got a very limited amount of people. If there's good mechanics out there that, that know what they're doing, that want to come to a race, hit me up. I mean, we're there. We can always use extra hands. We're, we're, we're doing this indie deal with about three people, <laughs> you know, not 14, three. But we'll get it done. You know, we won't be able to run both qualifying sessions because we won't be able to, we don't have enough hands to turn the car. But we're, we'll get the one shot in and, and, and we'll make it a good one. Terry, man, look, I commend you trying to get out there with the resources that you do got working with it. 
Uh, look, if you're out there and you want to be on a top fuel crew, man, hit up Totten Motorsports. You never know. You might be able to get that volunteer uh, status and get yeah. the resume built and begin rolling in uh, the world of Nitro. And I'm glad to hear that Scott Palmer and Terry Haddock have been such a big help to you. I was able to be with Terry out there at the ADRL Dragpalooza, which, folks, you can see on uh, the Monday Morning Racer YouTube channel or even Competition Plus. But Terry is one of the hardest working guys out there. It's glad to hear that he's helped you out. Yep. And Terry mentioned to me that with the upcoming schedule, that it was probably going to be challenging for him to run two cars and actually hire some extra people. Yeah. Look, with your program, when you look at just, you know, two, three qualifier runs, just a two-day event, is that an advantage or is that a disadvantage compared to what is normally for a NHRA event? You know, for, for us, on some days it's going to be an advantage and on some days it's going to be a disadvantage. You know, the NHRA has changed a rule, a longstanding rule of no testing on the track you know, prior to seven days of the event. But we've had some, you know, huge changes in the world and those are causing us to have to adapt. And the first adaption was they're going to let us, if you got a top fuel car, they're going to let you run on Friday. Um, before the event as a test session, which has never been done before. Um, we won't take advantage of it. Uh, I wish we could, but then again, it comes down to cubic do you know, the dollars that go with it. Um, we're going up there with enough money to make a couple good hits and try to be representable on Sunday, you know, and do our best to, to put somebody on the trailer or at least make them think twice about tuning down for us to get in the lane next to them. So it's, it, it, it's a, one way or the other, it just kind of depends. I mean, we have advantages when it comes to, uh, you know, weather changes and things like that, because we're not tuning within this little tiny window. You know, our stuff is set up to be, you know, when, when you want to go 377, you have to hit the bullseye, you know. And when, when we're trying to just run a 4 you know, our target's bigger. And, and we can usually hit that easier than they can. We have less chance of blowing the tires off of it, you know, less chance of, of uh, it running out of steam from, you know, just getting up there and going too fast. These guys, they got it down to a science, you know. I mean, the last pass that I made in the car was in Arizona against Brittany. And, uh, you know, they, they have a whole – I've never raced her before. They have a whole different staging procedure. And – our clutch got too hot. We started the car right away. I got out there, did my burnout, backed up, got pulled up to the lights and sat and sat and sat. And it felt like what was forever. And as soon as I hit the throttle, it just, it just watered the tire up. I had way too much heat in the clutch. Um, not much you can do about that after you start the car, you know? Uh, so those, those things like that, you know, we, we learned something that we won't do again, which is try to hurry up and, and, and make it because they got theirs down to be when that car pulls into the lights, they know how many seconds it's been. You know, we have never tried to take the upper hand or whatever. I, I've always basically gone out and did my thing and then just waited. Never tried to rush anybody or anything like that. So uh, we know how fast we can do it now. So we won't be starting our car till they start their car, you know, and not just particularly them, but in general, we're, we're quick enough now at the line that we can do that where I don't put the heat in the clutch because the cooler the clutch is when, you know, and that's why you see the guys roll, pushing the cars through because every time you let off that clutch pedal, you're putting heat in the clutch. So if you can hold the clutch in and those guys can get you rolling, um, that just that just makes your clutch work work better. The, another person that I want to really thank are two guys is Dom and Bobby Lagana. Those guys are out there and they help a lot of people and they've helped me especially when i'm struggling you know i can i can talk to bobby and say man this car just keeps doing this and i've done this and i've done this and he'll look at me and he'll say you know he doesn't come over and take over on tuning your car but he will give you some suggestions that are that are pretty close to the mark uh and that has really been been a help so we're excited. I mean, I'd like to get back out there racing, and, and with a little bit of help, uh, we're going to get the train rolling and, and keep on going. Future plans are to be running a funny car also, you know. Uh, I don't know if there's something about people with the name Terry that just are gluttons for punishment, but uh, <laughs> we're, uh, 
you know, and, and obviously that's going to require more help because, you know, we, we got another car going out there. So, but we're not going to, you know, that's owned by somebody else. Um, so I'm, I'm, I just basically consult and help, you know, build the car and it's been fun and it's a really neat looking car when you, when you see it on the track, it's, it's something to look for. Cool, Terry. Well, I got to ask this, you know, all the competitors are going to be up at Indy very soon for this Indy one, Indy two deal. Do you think it's going to feel weird being at uh, Indianapolis and it's not the U S <laughs> nationals? You think it's, it's going to be a bit odd? Yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's going to feel good to be back out there. It's going to be good to see everybody out there um, doing their thing. And uh, it's going to be, a lot of fun to get back in the car. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for fans, the fan aspect of it, the, the only one day of qualifying and then into illuminations on Sunday, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a different type of feeling. Yeah, I do. Um, I hopefully, you know, I keep hearing the word new norm. I hope it's not the new norm. You know, I hope things go back. I mean, I liked it the way it was, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm hoping that everything moves in that direction. I, I see all the stuff going on in other professional motors or other professional sports in general. And I just, I just hope that it just stays out of drag racing. You know, we don't, we don't have that kind of controversy. We, we do, you know, we, we've done the same thing for years and years and years. And I hope it stays that way. Gotcha, man. Yeah. I know folks are definitely looking forward to getting back to, nitro drag racing and right there really kind of in its its hometown its biggest hub yep. brownsburg yep. indiana indianapolis indiana well look back there in nebraska how has nebraska handled the whole quarantine covid19 you know pandemic what what has it been like in the midwest in the midwest it's actually you know we are uh pretty laid back out this way you know there are our, our, our density the density of our population is is a lot more spread out and and it's a lot easier to do what everybody is recommending that you do uh because we have the room so you know i being a plumber going into people's houses every day uh through this whole thing um as much as possible because you know obviously work has dropped to about 25 percent of our normal workload but you know that's a temporary thing um elective work which we consider our good work um work uh has pretty much gone away at this point but as far as people go uh you know the first week of this with all the shutdown and stuff you get, you know, you walk past somebody on the street and, and you get a funny, you know, you, you're, you're looking at people closer. You're looking at their eyes closer. You know, what, what do you here for? What is your intent? Uh, and, and that, you know, that went away pretty quickly here. You know, I mean, we had to travel to go pick up the rigs down in Arizona, right? When they were starting to lock or not lock down, but requesting people to stay home. And we took off and going through the different truck stops and stuff. And, and just the way people acted, uh, I think, it was, it was amazing because I, I always thought there would be a different type of attitude, but people were holding doors open for you. They were stepping back to give you room, um, eye contact, you know, and, and it just showed that human nature is going to prevail. I mean, it's not, this other stuff that's going on is, is, is temporary setback for, and man, I don't look at it any different than a group of, like, like a, a small child that's having a temper tantrum, you know, I mean, there's two ways to handle it. You can, stop it now or you can let them get it out of their system and it seems like we're letting them get it out of their system so hopefully when they get it out of their system we can continue on but it's not gonna i don't i personally don't think it's going to change the world i think it's going to make people look at things a little differently and appreciate things a little more because these things you know us being able to just get up and go and do what we want on a saturday morning when they start telling you you can't do that or shouldn't do that uh you know it plays a little bit on your psyche yeah, people don't like that we're americans that's right we're americans we love our freedom i, I hope people definitely appreciate freedom far greater after all of this and i hope they appreciate the freedom yep. to go to a racetrack whether that's yep. the local drag strip or it's to the national nhra meets that they 
appreciate going back to the track. I've enjoyed getting back to the track. I know you will enjoy getting yeah. back to the track. I know the fans will as well. Well, Terry, yeah, you look. get a couple of deep breaths of that nitro methane, and and you feel better. <laughs> Man, you do. You do. I was there. Terry was licensing Kim Davidson. Got yep. that on film, and yep. I'm walking around the fueler getting getting pelted with nitro fumes, you know, before he launched off. I mean, it, it was beautiful. I was like, yes, thank you, thank you. Yep. Yep. So uh, definitely looking forward to having that once again. And I know you're looking forward to being back behind uh, the driver's wheel and in the driver's cockpit. So, uh, Terry, look, glad that strutmasters.com is on board. Folks, get on board with Terry. Help him out if you – our mechanic and you want to get involved with the nitro crew reach out to taunt motorsports uh terry uh how can people reach you what social media all that good stuff uh, we're on facebook under you know i mean if you just go to my personal terry taunton facebook page you we don't have a separate page it's a page off that page so you'll find taunton motorsports tnt motorsports on my uh personal facebook but uh, I, I haven't hit the big limit yet so i, I can I can have more friends. <laughs> All right. Good deal, Terry. Well, look, Terry, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you. To everyone out there, you the drag racing fan, I'm the Monday morning racer for strutmasters.com. That's been Terry Tott, and we're all looking forward to racing once again with nitro methane at Indianapolis. <laughs>